familiar with it. So this is just going to be a very brief, obviously 15 minutes, overview of how the Fedora changes process works, how the distribution accepts new changes, what is expected of you as a potential change proposal owner, and generally what you can expect and the benefits that the project has seen because of having this this policy, this this um, this method in place. Okay, so quick overview. Um, hello, my name is Aoife. Uh, I am the Fedora Operations Architect. That is how you say my name, despite all of the vowels that they could possibly cram into to a, a one-syllable sounding name. Um, not two, really. And uh, my predecessor was a gentleman called Ben Cotton, so some of you may have known him. I was very fortunate enough to be mentoring with Ben Oh, in my, <laughs> I know, but he has given me full, like, full creative license to give a nod to, a, like, an obituary anytime I mention his name. Like, this is a running joke, so apologies. I'm letting you in now. But anyway, Ben, God rest him, um, he was uh, my mentor, and I've been able to learn through the, the floor changes process through his wise words that live on in his book, Please Buy. Okay, so, um, the changes process itself. I didn't realize my boss was in the audience. <laughs> um, so it's very important to note that the Fedora changes process is not about gatekeeping. We are not in a position to like ban people or dampen people's ideas on what they want to see the distribution become or use it as. Fesco is. <laughs> um, no, but they, they're not. If you have a reasonable, a reasonable change, they will listen. Um, but it is more about communication. Not about, gate, can, not about gatekeeping, more communication. It is meant to serve as a flow of communication within the project, throughout the project, and outside of the project for what is happening in Fedora. Um, the Fedora project is a hugely diverse place, and information is everywhere, and also at the same time nowhere. So this process just keeps things like this very centered. So you know what to expect, you know where to go, you know who to reach out to when you, when you are looking to make a change in, in Fedora. It covers what we build. So if you have a change and it is going to affect what is actually built in the Fedora operating system, um, and it's like vanilla Fedora, so not necessarily any of the spins or, or that stuff, it covers mainly additions and the operating system itself. So if you have a change that you'd like to make and it hits that, it's a change pro proposal. Um, if you are changing how things are built, so if you have a new image generation tool that you want to introduce to the project, that's a change proposal. Um, it also covers some policy changes as well. So if you want to change maybe from uh, dynamic linking to static linking, it came up last night in dinner, so that's a good, a good example, that's a change proposal. We have two mechanisms of tracking changes in Fedora. Um, we have a system-wide category and we also have a self-contained category. Um, the system-wide is, kind of speaks for itself, um, it is changes that are going to change something fundamentally within the project. So whether that's a policy change that affects the entire project, whether it is a tooling change, whether it's an introduction of a new hardware, the big, big changes are system-wide. If you think it's going to reach more than your own group, it's system-wide. Um, a self-contained change, again, speaks for itself. It's something very uh, close and within your working group, your SIG, whatever it may be. But if it's still big enough that it will affect like end users, it, it is a change proposal. But you, can, you have a bit more leniency with the self-contained ones because you're only making the, the big change but affecting a small number of, of users. Uh, but m watch for the maintainers because those hidden dependencies are everywhere. So, why is the process there? Um, I believe there was a features process many years ago. It predates my time in Fedora. Um, and it was not the most ideal solution. The, the, it just wasn't very concentrated. The, the information was too scattered. Um, so, the changes process was developed basically to build awareness throughout the project so that if I'm making a change and Ellen, who I know in the audience here, uh, is a maintainer and she's, she can see my proposal, she can read it, she, she understands what it's about and she can see, oh crap, that's actually going to really screw up my project. So it's building that awareness within the project itself that like my change is not going to screw up her work and vice versa. 
coordination um, in a project like Fedora, in an, any open source project, you know, coordination is key. People need to be able to work together. They need to know where they should be able to reach out. So I'd like to have a central coordination point for changes that are going to affect you is key. Um, so the, changes pro the change proposal policy, changes process, that serves as that coordination point for, for the project itself. And generally, it just makes things a little bit easier because it's this like continuous, steady flow throughout the project's development cycle. It's a six-month development. It's fast-moving. So it's nice to know that there's this one continuous factor when you're trying to land changes, um, do, do your work, test, test anything coming up. The changes pr process is just that central linking point. To give a bit more detail into it, because it's a really great process, <laughs> obviously. Um, it gives a heads up as well to not only just the people within the project, but those who consume our project that may not, that may not necessarily like contribute code, but enjoy using Fedora. So it gives a heads up to people who are interested in what may be coming in the next major release of Fedora. Like I said, in the example, it gives a heads up to fellow maintainers, contributors, that those changes could affect them, they can mitigate for them, or they could actually leverage them for their, for their betterment. And um, another great little side effect that we have been recently seeing with the changes process is that the Fedora marketing team is really super strong. It's headed up by a gentleman called Joseph Gayoso, and he's wonderful. But he's also now plugging into the changes process to, to like grep some new changes coming into the new release. Um, and starts generating some, some buzz about it. So there was a lot of atomic changes. Fedora Atomic landed in F40. Joseph was using the change process to follow along with those changes, the change set to like take a couple of the, the finer points of it and start like generating a bit of, hey, guess what's coming in, in Fedora 40? There's a Fedora Atomic rebrand coming. So it was we already had a, a little press buzz for the new release from the marketing team utilizing our changes process. Welcome. And like I said, it's also good planning as well. Like the fact that you have visibility into other people's ideas of work and their and what that work would entail is invaluable in software. Um, the fact that you can share it, it's transparent, you can find it, you can read it, you can offer some advice and feedback on that work. Um, it's, it's really amazing to know what the left hand is doing if you happen to be the right hand. So, okay, very quickly then, so we know what it is, we know all the good stuff that it brings, and now you may be somebody who'd like to submit a change to Fedora. So, what do you do? How, how does it work? Couldn't be any easier. You have to prepare your idea, prepare the proposal. It's all housed in Fedora Wiki right now, um, may end up in discourse in some later date in the future, uh, we're still tinkering with that. But you prepare your proposal, there's a template, um, Fedora Wiki, and then you just do your, your slash and then your name of your proposal. You fill out the de relevant details and then you submit it. There's, um, there's a bracket that you change, you just tag it as change ready for Wrangler and it shows up in a queue for me. So that's your submitting proposal section. Then the fun part starts, the community feedback. Depending on how wild of a proposal you are, uh, you will get a lot of discussion, or a standard change will get a lot of discussion. No, it doesn't. The, sta <laughs> the, the standard one, the most nine times out of ten proposals are very, very well received. Depends on the quality of how they're written, you know, so I would advocate for everybody to, if you're set submitting a change proposal, to make sure that your summary is quite clear, go into your detailed description, include some release notes if you have them. They're very helpful. Um, and especially the how to test. So people that are reading and would like to like test out your theory, like does this actually hold water? You've given them you've given them means to do so and either support your your proposal, offer you some updates or iterations on it, or outright say that's a crock of shit. Don't do that. So the community feedback period is usually about two weeks ish thereabouts, um, and it is great because it it involves our community into our changes. Like we don't want to build an operating system from like a core group of people. We want to have that community engagement there. So it's it's really wonderful that our changes proposal process incorporates that into it. After the feedback, 
the proposer, proposal owner will either decide, Ooh, that didn't go down so well, I better change a bit of that, or else they will say, yeah, grant, we'll put it into FESCO. And that is the uh, Fedora Engineering Steering Committee. They are the ones that do hold the voting power to say yes or no, or could we change something and then we can say yes. So they, they are the ones that ultimately your change proposal will come down to, to a yay or a nay. And they're, they're very receptive as well. I can't advocate enough for them that if there is an issue with your change, they will be very communicative back to you and explain, you know, I like it, but this could do with some changing. Could be as simple as a, as a rename, you know, maybe make the name clear. They'll vote. And if you are successful, do the work. You've t told us what you want to do. We have listened. We have shared what we wanted. We have said, yeah, sounds great. Now it's up to you to do it. That is basically it in a nutshell. Um, when you're doing the work, you will have me pestering you saying, hey, uh, is it ready for testing yet? Oh, uh, the deadline is coming up. Make sure that it's available for testing code complete yet. Oops. So we've done what it is, why it's good, how to do it. Now into the nitty gritty parts, and I cannot stress this enough, the dates, people, the dates. Important F41 deadlines are right around the corner. Um, we are looking at the beta freeze on the 20th of August, which seems like a lifetime away, but it's only maybe eight weeks or less. The beta freeze is where you have to have your changes 100% code complete. At the moment, we're targeting the 15th of August for the F41 release. That was a typo, sorry, because um, F40 got out fine. And then if you are running F39, two typos, sorry about that, F39 is the 12th of November. So that's your EOL date for F39. Okay, and just a little bit more because I am harping on with the, ch with the deadlines and the dates. That is a large part of my job is watching those. Um, you are just around the corner for some change proposal deadlines. If you have something monumental that our whole infrastructure layer will have to be rebuilt, please get it in by next week. Hopefully not. Um, <coughs> If you have any changes that require a mass rebuild, 25th of uh, June. System-wide changes, because they also require mass rebuilds, they have the same deadline. So again, you are two weeks away from your system-wide changes not making the cut for F41. And then you have a little bit more flex time with the 16th of July as your deadline for the self-contained ones. Uh, we're going to be branching on the 6th of August, so that's why you're, it's really important to get your system-wide changes in even earlier than that date. Like that date is your drop-dead date. But if you could get it in tomorrow, today, in 10 minutes, that would be even better. Give yourself that runway to like land the changes in Rawhide, do some testing, and then all you're doing is just tidying up your code, making it clean, making it nice for, for end user consumption. Um, if you want to get more involved in the changes process, there's plenty places plugging in into it. You can just follow along. You can give some feedback on current changes that have been proposed. Um, there's a blocker bug app that our Fedora QA team really rely on both to like get the release out, but also to get more involvement in testing. Find those bugs, find a solution for the bugs, even better. But it's, it's really like, I can't advocate for that part enough as well. Blocker bugs app is your one-stop shop to, to really make a difference in the Fedora release come crunch time. Um, you can absolutely always help with packages and apps. I don't think there's a package or app maintainer here that wouldn't take the hand off of a contributor that tried to help them with, with anything, so always that. And there are loads of test days in the Fedora project, both post-release, pre-release, lots of times in the cycle. I think there's even one currently, or just had been one, on the DNF5 change. So watch for the test days. They're usually posted on the community blog. Uh, Sumantra Mukherjee is usually the... the the brains behind those, and they're a great way to get that early testing into our next upcoming release. Um, there's a ton of links. This will be, uh, these slides will be available on the pre-talks once I have them updated. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>